Hey guys, in this week's tip, we're going to start off a series that reviews the analysis menu within SMS Pro. You know, if you've ever messed around in the back office and you just clicked on the analysis menu, you see a heck of a lot of tools here that are available to you. So we're going to spend some time and go through each one of these. Now over the course of the next few weeks, we're going to be spending a heck of a lot of time within SMS Pro. You can see that's where I'm at now. I'm in a basic item cost view. To get there, all I did was simply click the view menu and then I went to item cost. This is the default view where you have your filter, your browser, your main item table, your POS table, your price and your cost tables. As we go through the various analysis tools, we're going to add some more windows on this screen and show you how they work. Okay, so to kick things off, we're going to go ahead and hit the analysis menu, and this week we're going to work on the utilities tool set here. When we click on that, a window is going to pop up over here, and it's called maintenance utilities. Now there are a heck of a lot of buttons here. Don't worry though, we'll go through each of them this week. So to get started, I'm going to go ahead and pull up a listing of items in our browser, and I'm going to pick one that I know has some data behind it so we can take a look at some things. Let's pick this one right here, POU123. Now we're going to focus on these first four buttons up here to start with, so let's go ahead and jump into that. The Apply Changes button listed right here, it's really no different than the Apply Changes button listed in the top right corner of any one of our windows where we might change some item data. So let's take a look at how it works. I'm going to go ahead and set up a sale price on this particular item, and we're going to set the active date for today, and we're going to run it, say, through Sunday. And if we hit Apply All Changes, notice down here what's going to happen. The same exact thing if I were to hit Apply All Changes here. It's just another location for you to do that. We hit Apply All Changes, our next price is going to be equal to our sale price of $18.99. The same can be said for the Deploy Changes button listed here third in line. It's really no different than if we were to do the Preference menu, Deploy Changes. All it's going to do is take all the changes that we've done in our item maintenance session here and deploy those out to the various lanes and other systems that are connected to the network. Now this Display Changes button, it's kind of cool. What it's going to do is it's going to list in the browser over here all the items that we've been working on where we've made changes. So if we hit it, you'll see what happens. We only worked on this one particular item in this case, but because we made a change to it, we added our sale pricing, it's going to go ahead and show up in the browser now so that we can verify all the changes that we made during this session. Now the last button here in the top section is called Instant Label. It's a great little time saver. If you remember, we set up a sale price on our item. Now we had to print out a new label so we can go stick on the shelf so that the customers know what the heck is going on. To do that, we simply hit the Instant Label button. Now we're presented with a menu of choices. We know we want to print out our sale price label. I just have to simply select the label from my list here. This is the one I want. If we want to print other price changes that we've done, we can do that down here. I'm going to go ahead and hit launch. The system is going to do its thing. I'm going to close this window out. And if we go over into the label module and I go ahead and select the print label, you see that the label that we made is right here. It's ready to go. I'm going to go ahead and print this to a PDF file and I'll bring it back so you can take a look at it. So when you're ready, all you have to do is hit the print button. You're going to get that typical menu menu that pops up that allows you to select which label printer you want to send it to. I'm going to go ahead and send mine to the PDF printer. You're going to hit launch. The system is going to do its processing, finish the job, and in the end, you're going to get a printout of something like this. It's going to be the label that you selected. We've got our sale pricing right here and all the information that I want to stick out on my shelf so the customers know what's going on. Pretty neat little tool. Okay, let's go through the second set of buttons right here underneath the Windows label. Each one of these buttons here opens up a new table for us that allows us to see what's going on with our item. Some of these are going to be pretty self-explanatory. Just to illustrate, I'm going to go ahead and close the price window and show you that if you hit price, that pricing window right there is going to pop back up. If you do the same thing with cost, the cost window is going to pop back up. Now it's going to display it up here, so we're going to have to move it down a little bit so that we can see things a little bit better. And maybe we can expand it so we can see some additional fields. Now the rest of these buttons are set up for batches. Now you typically wouldn't create a batch in this view because there are some additional windows that you need open. But let's say you're messing around in your item file and you're doing some item maintenance and you want to determine whether or not you have any future batches set up for this item. Well, that's what these buttons are for. Now remember, we've been working on this item for a little bit. We even set up a sale price for it that's going to run through the 15th. Now let's take a look and see if there are any changes that are coming down the pike on this thing. If I hit the future price button, what that's going to do is it's going to bring up the future price batches window for us. And sure enough, we do have a change coming. Actually on 4.15 as well, we've got a new regular price that's going to change it to what our sale price is today. Well heck, that's kind of neat. So we know that on Monday the 15th, our new regular price is going to be $18.99. I wonder why we did that. Did we get a new cost from the vendor? Well, we might have. Let's take a look. All we have to do is hit the future cost button, and there it is. Sure enough. Let me pull it down here so everybody can see it. On 415, corresponding with the same date, we're getting an updated cost from our vendor. Now, it's giving us a little bit of a price break from what we pay today. Now, let's look at some of the other buttons up here. Now, we know we got an updated cost coming from the vendor, so I wonder if we're running a special on this at the same exact time. Well, let's take a look at the future sale batch. Let me open the window, pull it down here so we can take a look, and sure enough, there we go. 415, 
through that week ending 421, we're going to run a sale on this thing. Remember, our regular price is going to go down to 1899 because of our future price change. Now with this future sale batch, we're going to go ahead and put a sale on it for the first week of 1799. That's pretty cool. Now I don't think we got a TPR set up, but let's take a look. If we did, it would show up, and no, we sure don't. No TPR, but we did have a future price change, a future cost update, and a sale price going on. That's pretty cool stuff. Now this coupon button right here will tell us if we have an electronic coupon associated with this item. Now I know we don't, so let's skip that for a second and we'll come back. Let's go ahead and hit the shelf button right here. What that's going to do is bring up the shelf location table for this particular item. You can tell it's got our shelf ID, where this thing is at, and it also associates a price label for it, so when we do those print labels on pricing events, all that is going to be set up right here. Just as a quick reminder, if you take the time to set up your shelf location by items, it can be really handy down the road. Let's say we're working on a huge batch of price changes, and we have to print out labels for all those new and updated prices. Well, if you go ahead and take the time up front to set your shelf location, the labels will print out in aisle order and location order. As you would walk down the aisle, you can hang those labels a little bit easier, spending less time doing so. Now I'm going to do a little house cleaning, and we're going to jump over here into the coupon button. Okay. Everybody knows SMS sets up electronic coupons as items. The reason we do that is so we can track the financial impact and also the movement of those promotions a heck of a lot easier. So I went ahead and searched for an item that I know is an electronic coupon and we're going to go over here and hit the coupon button and see what happens. What that button does is open up the coupon link table for this particular electronic coupon. Basically what the coupon link table is, is it sets the criteria that are required in order to get the promotion, whatever that promotion may be. In its simplest form in our case here, we got to spend $20 in our bakery department and we get a buck coupon. That's really what's going on here. Now there's a heck of a lot more detail behind this and a lot of flexibility in this tool, so we'll have to do some sessions down the road on how to make electronic coupons. All right, moving right along. The next button up is this execute button underneath the batches header. If we hit it, basically what it is, is it is a tool that allows us by date to execute the batches that are on file. We can go forward and backward or backward and forward, however we want to do it. We also have the handy dandy calendar tool that you're used to where we can pop it up, pick a particular date, and then we're ready to go. All we have to do to launch the batches on 410 is just hit the go button here. I'm not going to do any of that, so we'll cancel out. Excellent work. Look how far we've come. We're down here in the lower portion now. Now these next set of buttons right here, there are some tools that allow us to interact with the items that are in the browser. So to set this up, I'm going to go ahead and search on a sub-department that I know has some good item data in it, and we'll pull that up. Oh, wait a second. Did you see that? Hang on a second. Do you know how to do that? Underneath the search field here in the filter, if you hit the drop down button, you got a bunch of options that you can use to search your item file. I want to select subdepartment. Then did you see what happened when I brought the cursor over here to condition? I don't know what the heck the subdepartments are for all my items. So you see that little question mark there? That means I can double click in that condition field and it pops up a handy dandy little window here with all my subdepartments in alphabetical order and it lists the subdepartment number over here so I don't have to remember them. So I want to take a look at barbecue sauce. All we have to do is highlight it, click OK. I'm going to launch my search at that point, and in the browser is going to be displayed all the items that are in the barbecue subdepartment. Pretty cool. So I got the items open up here in my browser from the subdepartment I want to examine, and a quick way to do that, we just come over here and hit the item movement cube. Now we've gone over cube reporting in the past, so we won't spend a lot of time on it, but basically what it does, we hit this button over here in our utility window, it brings up the item movement cube for those items that we're working on here in our browser. We can move the window around so we can work on our pricing, look at our costing, maybe adjust some of our other attributes on the item, all right here with the cube information open. So we can see our profitability, we can double click the headers, you guys know all this stuff, so we can sort that stuff on the fly. Right now we're looking at our top 10 items within the subdepartment and we get some analysis down here that tells us what those top 10 represent. If we wanted to look at all items we can move it down a little bit. Those things would update dynamically in front of you. So that's a neat little tool and you can do it with the utility window open very quickly for all the items that are in the browser. Let's close out the cube and move on a little bit. I'm working in the same sub department on all those same items and you know generally speaking when you're working on uh, items like this and you're maintaining the file there's some paper reports that can come in handy. Well we make it pretty simple. You could go through the reporting module and go through all the menus and find the reports you need or with a maintenance utility window open you can hit this little button called paper reports and it gives you a separate window that interacts with the items that are already in the browser and it can list some reports on it that are important to you. In our case we got some cost of goods info, some sales info, some inventory reporting and some interdepartmental transfers and price lists down here. So real quick I hit one button I come to the reports that I want to see for the items that are in my browser and all I have to do is hit the button here and interact with it just like the regular report generator that we use. I need to back mine up so I get some data, launch the report, the paper report is ready and it's just the items that are in the browser. Just a quicker way to get to it. 
Kind of a neat little tool as well. Let's close these out and keep on moving. Next button up in our list here is the label button. If we click it, it's going to have a similar interface that you're used to for other price label events that you do. Again, this is just going to take it to printing price labels based on an event, say a batch price change, maybe a sale price, something like that. You're going to set it up just like what you're used to, only this time, just like before with the paper reports, it's easier to get to. We don't have to go through the label module or anything like that, and we're interacting with just the items that are already in the browser. So again, one button, interact with the interface that you're used to, launch it, and print those labels for just those items that are in your browser. Now these last set of buttons down here are pretty specialty ones. They're only used in certain circumstances and I would highly recommend that you interact with your authorized SMS reseller to ensure that you're using them in the proper way. The Take Ownership button, just to give you a quick overview of it, it's used in multi-store environments. It's where the host manages a lot of the pricing, the items, all the changes, things like that. But they allow the stores to individually manage some of those items. Now, in that scenario, say the host wants to take control of those items back, move it from the store level back to the host level, all they have to do is bring those items into the browser, hit the Take Ownership button, and then they're going to get that confirmation button there. The Remove PDA Flag button here is only used if you use your PDA devices to set up your store initially for things like shelf location, price verification, that sort of thing. If you do do that and you want to remove that flag at a later time, this is where you could do it. Now these last couple of buttons down here dealing with inventory, those are highly specialized. In many, many cases they're not even going to be used. So if you don't know what perpetual means or you're not tracking perpetual inventory, just ignore them. Otherwise, make sure you talk with your SMS authorized reseller before using these buttons. That way we don't screw up any data. Well, that's it for this week's tip. Hopefully this first look at the analysis menu has given you some ideas of how you can use some of these time-saving tips within your own store. Until next time, have a great day.